What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? What an amazing, amazing weekend, y'all. What a great time to be an NC State fan. We are rolling. Got myself, Lane Smith, here in Kansas Blackwater here with us right now. Michael Tracy would be joining us here momentarily. Uh, Greg DeLeg and Macon are both wrapped up, unfortunately, tonight as they are both still recovering from the trip back from Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> Greg got in like at 1 o'clock this morning. And then Macon got back uh, last night late, and uh, they're participating in the the furniture market because uh, they, they live up in High Point. And they're they're participating in the furniture market up there uh, tomorrow, so they have been scrambling all evening. So it'll just be three of us tonight, but uh, but luckily enough too, we got a a few people already uh, here with us as well in the chat. So make sure again, y'all, if you've been with us before, you know the drill. But if you haven't, as always, make sure again any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns that you have. Make sure you go ahead and put them in the chat, and we will get to many as many of them, if not all of them, here today. So with that being said, Ken's, uh, how are we feeling? Are we feeling good? Or are we feeling a little, you know, disappointed? What, what are you feeling right now? I mean, I don't think you can feel disappointed, honestly. The run that we had, I've, I'm still on cloud nine about it, if I'm being completely honest. Um, right. I think that it's mainly because people my, and, like, our age – have been dreaming of this moment. Like we've wanted to experience what everybody in 83 felt. And we finally got to experience that run and just letting it be these guys and letting them just defy all the odds. I think that just made it 10 times better. hundred percent. Yeah. No, I mean, getting super proud of these guys. I mean, it, 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 and girls, I mean, and, oh, yeah. and, 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 uh, you know, just this whole team, it really was, you know, obviously I feel even better actually about the men that I really do the women, but, you know, again, the South Carolina is just a juggernaut. Uh, you know, they, I mean, we played them well, you know, but I, I think that, to be honest with you, a little bit of, I think, how close we were in the first half was a lot of a lot of it had to do with, I mean, South Carolina just wasn't playing their best ball, but in the third quarter, they yeah. came out just, just all things clicking. And in third uh, quarter isn't our quarter usually at all so exactly that too so you know just uh just those things combined just South Carolina just ran away with it but um again we'll kind of talk to, to here a little bit more but talking about the men here real quick um you know for me th that game really came down to really two things of why we didn't pull that out a Michael O'Connell getting injured I think was honestly huge huge uh you know effect on the game for sure uh, i mean only played 12 minutes in the game got injured pretty early in the game when he was on that fast break and tripped and uh you know uh he was on the bike uh i think to start the second half and then he came back a little bit late but uh and then secondly just just shots weren't going in and uh you know really sometimes you know in the game of basketball and especially when you can't go to the basket because that's everything you know is that that what you say well if you're if the shots aren't going in then go to the basket and and get we it. We have in. a freaking it, what, eight foot tall guy down there what? that's not really letting us. Well, exactly. Like 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 if if Casey Morsell or DJ Horn or any of those guys tried to drive to the basket, I would have said you're that's a terrible idea. A because it's Zach Eady. You're not going to get those calls. Not you know and eight times out of ten. That's oh wait, I'll save that for what really grinds my gears. Never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but also too, like like he's gonna block you every single time. I mean that that dude's you know he's he's the two time AC, a, a, AP National Player of the Year. Like you know and, he, and he's that for a reason. And so the last thing we want to do is go and try and challenge that. Uh, yeah. So so you know I, I thought we were in the right places. I don't think we necessarily took bad shots. We played defense really really well again. Just like I said in my tweet yesterday. I mean we held Zach Yee to his lowest points total, and then his second lowest rebound total of of the entire NCAA tournament. Um, you know, we held Purdue to like, like 15 to 20 points below their season average. So defensively, we did everything we needed to, um, you know, just we were offense. smart. Yeah. Just, just offense. And I, I stand on the, the statement that I heard a lot of people say, if we'd have played them the next day or any other day, we'd have come out with that win. It was just, our shots weren't falling. We weren't getting the shots that we wanted off. Um, I think that definitely if Michael O'Connell would have stayed in, we would have kept that uh, that energy we had from the beginning. Because in the first five minutes, I thought – I was like, okay, this looks great. Like, we could actually pull this out. Yeah. But after he got hurt, it was like that spark. Whenever we would need that spark, he's usually the one that gives it to us. And yep. it just – our shots weren't falling to give us that. So. 
Yeah. No, in the first half, we were shooting uh, 13 of 29, so about 45% from the field. And then, and then the second half, we shot 8 for 28, which is 28.6% uh, from the field. So, again, a huge change. And also, too, we also only had four free throw attempts, which, again, a lot of that is – That's my grandma of, gears. Well, well – <laughs> All right, let's so see here. For the, for the sake of you, Kens, I'll go ahead and, and, let, and let you look at yours. So, so, so Kens, go ahead. Really grinds my gears. I just don't remember the last time that I watched a basketball game and the team only shot four free throws. Like, I genuinely don't. And, yes, I get that he's eight feet tall, basically. But, I mean, four free throws in an entire 40 minutes of basketball, I, I just I don't understand that. I really don't. That makes zero sense to me. Yeah. And that really irritates me. Yeah, it really grinds your gears. I love it. it really Michael, my gears. What up, bud? What's up? What up? What up? Just came in just at a good time, man, for some real what really grinds my gears, bud. So okay. uh but uh yeah, I mean, so so I was talking about, you know, how we, we attempted only four free throws for the entire game. I think a lot of that honestly has to do with the fact that, you know, we, we didn't we didn't go to the basket and that was by yeah. choice, you know, and that was by plan too. Like and that was by right plan. Like again, you just just like I was saying right before you got on when I talked to you about this at the time is that with a guy like Zach Eady, you just can't go to the basket with your guards. You just can't, so, you know, because you're not gonna get those calls eight times out of ten. And uh he's gonna block you every single time. So mm -hmm. so I think I think that greatly diminishes your opportunities to get foul calls. Uh so you know what, what's your thoughts i mean like i mean overall like kind of thinking back on the game like there wasn't necessarily a time where i was really displeased with the refereeing just more of that yeah that i mean like it was just crazy it was just blowing my mind that basically 12 minutes into the, it took 12 to 13 minutes into the game for purdue to get their first foul call which was crazy yeah yeah no i I didn't think it was too bad overall but you know watching from the stands you don't get as good of a view as the tv sure um but it, it, no, we definitely, <laughs> yeah, especially you yeah, get where, where we were, but yeah. I mean, we definitely settled a lot for mid range shots, like you were saying. It's, yeah, you don't want to go to the basket against Edie. Uh, I mean, you need to yeah. because they're they'll let you shoot mid range all day, but yeah, I don't know. I didn't think it was too bad, but yeah, it, it was, um, four, four free throws is not a lot, yeah. Well, and I want to be clear too, saying that like it's not. I'm not saying that we shouldn't go at all, but in a, in a set piece offense, like you know, once you're set, like if okay, if it's not a fast break, then I'm not recommending you go at Zach Eady if he's set there waiting for you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if he's on a fast break and there's an opportunity, then yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but, because but, he's, but, he's not athletic enough on a fast break. Correct, and but also too, that's the other thing is that unfortunately we we're just missing layups, you know. Too, we were just missing easy shots. Um, so that's the only thing that I would really say, like, like I'm disappointed is like, you know, once again, like we just couldn't take advantage of the easy of, of all the easy shots, um, you know. And uh, you know, Vincent brings a, a great point right here, saying it might be some to set be said about shooting in a football stadium yeah. too. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I mean that that definitely makes a, a difference for sure. And so in a game where you have a guy like Zach Eady who he's going to shoot the ball, you know, 30 times, two feet or less away from the basket. That's, that's, that's a benefit to them, you know, and, uh, you know, in regards to our guys like DJ Burns. So I thought, I mean, overall, you know, didn't play as, didn't, it wasn't a bad game. I mean, a uh, uh, four for 10, uh, but he had four assists, only two turnovers, uh, one block. So, not a terrible game, but again, but I honestly think it's kind of what you expected against a guy like Zach Eady, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm not necessarily shocked by that stat line. Would y'all agree? No. No. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. I just – I think that's a – that's not somebody you – he's a very rare breed in basketball, how tall he is, especially in college basketball. So you don't yeah. get a lot of experience in the ACC. I feel like the tallest person that we had in the – tournament was probably Filipowski that we had to deal with other than him so I mean I feel like yeah. if our shots were dropping because he wasn't he was missing a lot of his shots too like mm -hmm. you said like we held him to his lowest scoring so I just feel like every time we get it within five we would they would just drain a three so I mean yeah. it's, hard. it's hard to catch back up with that when our shots aren't falling I mean, definitely the 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 toughest point of the game for sure was that three pointer at the end of the first half when we had drawn it down to three and then they hit that three pointer and that just I think just took a lot yeah. of the air out of the balloon honestly. Yeah. 
That I was think tough. Michael fought, got getting hurt took a lot of energy out of the guys too. Yeah, yeah. and it, and it just you know disrupted the offense. Uh, you know when he when O'Connell was playing, he's been playing thirty plus minutes this whole, you know, yeah. the whole run, and yeah. it was the offense was you know running through Burns, but also through O'Connell. You know, so yeah. he was bringing the ball up the court almost every time. Yeah, and it was you know a half a half court set. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, uh, he, Nick Potter bringing up how the Celtics and the Bucks got a combined two free throws the whole game yesterday. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's uh, like gone, gone the other way where they called literally no fouls at all. Yeah. Re- referees just had a, a night off, I guess. So, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, Vince, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, playing, playing in a stadium that big for sure is going to, is going to throw it off. No doubt about it. So, um, you know, but again, at, at the end of the day, that that's like what I was saying earlier. It, it just comes down to that it was a better matchup for Purdue than it was for us. Um, but again, the guys played hard; they never quit. Um, I mean, defense you know. was great. It yeah, was, they played great. They played great. They just they just couldn't <laughs> couldn't make a basket again. Yeah, oh. um, I knew but, when we got on that fast break and missed that layup. I was like, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was just like run. <laughs> there were a couple plays that throughout the nine games before that we had been making and and then we just weren't making them that the, the miss bunk the miss dunk by Diara um, Jane Taylor missed the fast break layup he at one point he, he was it was kind of like a pseudo fast break but he just kind of lost it out of bounds. Yeah. Um, you know, Breon Pass came in and had, gave some good minutes, and then he okay. he had another three at the top of the key. That if that would have gone in, that would have that would have really changed the momentum. I think that would have brought us within three again. But we could never just get you know get past I that. If, if six one of those, points. if one of those would have gone in, I feel like the momentum would have shifted, and that would have mm-hmm. changed the oh, game sure. completely. But yeah. just watching it, you could just see it. And hear it in the fans. You just heard all the Sapiens go, oh, like right when he missed yeah. that dunk. So, yeah. yeah, it was every play that was going for us wasn't that. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, so, real quick, I want to talk a little bit here about the uh, uh, AP poll top 25 uh, that uh, NC State finished number 10 in the country, which, mm-hmm. first of all, I mean, I got to give a huge shout out. That's crazy to think about once again. Not only just Winning AC championship, not only you know, uh, you know, getting to the final four, but also finishing in the top ten, like that's that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, like, we, and, and we'll and we'll talk a little bit about you know who was above us. Also, got even more money in his pocket too, finishing in the top ten. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> added like, to his bonuses. But but Michael, I know you talked a little bit about it. Um, but uh, so so what, what were your what what were your thoughts about that about that placement? Yeah, I mean. It's like Duke at nine, right, right in front of us. Like, really, <laughs> we just beat yeah. them twice to end the season. But um, right. you know, it it's just crazy. We went from finishing tenth in the ACC at the end of the regular season to finishing tenth in the in the at the end of the term. It's pretty cool. That's that's a good thought. Yeah. Now, so yeah. so for those who are listening in that haven't seen it, so UConn finished one, shocker. Uh, <laughs> Purdue second, Bama third, uh, Houston tied for third. Uh, Tennessee, Illinois, UNC, Iowa State, Duke, NC State, Marquette, Arizona, Creighton, Clemson. So, um, yeah, I, I don't necessarily have really have much issues with it, but I mean, I do think it stands out that the top three teams are the other three teams that finished in the final yeah, four, and I we finished in tenth. I was like, where were we were the other final four team? There was a, there was only four teams in Arizona, so yeah. why are we in double digits? <laughs> yeah, but. yeah. Um, but but Razor pointing out a great stat uh, that that both both men's and women's have never finished the season in the top ten before. So that's a great little stat right there, uh, and something to hang your hat on for sure. So, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, also too, y'all, if you have if if y'all haven't checked it out yet, I gotta give a shout out too. Is uh, uh, my man, one of uh, uh he's 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 definitely a, a favorite YouTube channel of mine and a, a sharp a snarp sharp. I keep forgetting his name, but the guy that does all like the, the like he'll like dress up as the opposing fan and go like you know troll yeah. the other teams fans you know uh, like he did that for NC State 
uh, where he went to Hillsborough Street and dressed up as a Purdue fan and uh, and like you know was going trolling the NC State and like on one side I wanted to post That's... it just because it's what what it... what's your thought I thought Go he was it. an I thought he was an actual fan of the team. No, he's not. That's kind of no, that's kind of lame to pretend to be an opposing fan. I'm sure he. Oh, but, I'm sure it's it's yeah. I'm sure it's he gets, entertaining. You, you should go yeah. check out the one where he dressed up as a as a Duke fan uh, for the UNC Duke men's basketball game, and he went to the UNC. He went to, uh, uh, he, he went to UNC uh, arena, and he dressed up as a Duke fan. Yeah, like yeah. was on the outside and was like like trolling the students. It was pretty funny. And so for the state side, like seeing actually him troll NC State, like. Uh, on one side, it was like it was funny, but on one side, on the other side, I mean, you know, we had some students going after him for sure, and I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, so, uh, you know, but I'll still, I mean, yeah, I can't really blame them because I mean, you know, he, he showed up to Hillsborough Street. I mean, he, that's know, what he's tra- he's trying to get that reaction. You're gonna get some smoke, you yeah. know, so, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I'll say that we didn't, we we haven't said our, our students didn't say the worst things I've ever heard that uh, <laughs> people be said to, to him, uh, so. You know, I'll take that. And actually, most of the video was him actually getting interviewed uh, by like a, a a TV news channel, which I thought was hilarious that they actually thought that he's uh, yeah. a Purdue fan. Which I don't know if he ever told them that he's actually not. But uh, so I, yeah, no. So so I highly suggest people go check it out. It was uh, pretty entertaining for sure. Um, but uh, you know, Nick saying Hillsborough Street was super fun, though. That's what made me think of that about that. Mm-hmm. But I also got to give a shout out, and, and uh, also to a uh, you know what really grinds my gears. At so I think it was Mitch's Tavern that hosted that event on Hillsborough Street. I think it was, and and yeah. how they how when the game started, they didn't have the TV on the right channel. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, come on, man. That's like that's a step one of hosting a yeah. watch party. Is yeah. Make sure yeah. that you have the TV ready. We were at the sports social in Cary, and a lot of our friends are on Hillsbury Street, and they were texting in the group chat, like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Like, we could have been right. there. But yeah. it, it is, was- like, crazy that it wasn't on CBS, though. I don't, When did they start? Is this the first year they've done that? Put it on the Final Four on TBS? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, well, especially because, again, like like you saw, Mike, you and I saw Michael. Like, I mean, they had the whole CBS sports team, like, you know, uh, like you know, an analyst crew out there, yeah. uh, you know, in Fan Fest for the entire time. So how do you have a, a CBS sports crew covering it, but then your station isn't covering the game? Like, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. showing the game. It's crazy. So yeah. definitely didn't make sense. Um, and uh, Carson here saying there was a watch party for the women at Stafford um, on campus, and they kept changing the channel during commercials. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. <laughs> to what? Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly, but <laughs> I, I would love to know. So, um, Ray's just saying, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's been CBS forever. I'm 65. I do remember NBC back years ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, <clears throat> but again, got to give you a huge shout out, though, to, to this team once again. I mean, that, I mean, this 10 game stretch has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, and, and, exciting to watch and uh you know for us to be finish the season three spots below unc in the rankings uh you know and you, you know just how, how much the seniors just really rallied i mean like how i, I love the fact that dj burns after the game how he put his back he made sure to put his back to the 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 um the picture i think it was from us winning the ac championship or was it mm. the, of us winning the final four like, i can get the final four but but either way, but either way, it was basically just him signifying, like, like, look at what we accomplished. Like, look, look how far we have come. Like, look, look at the corner we are turning as a program. Yeah. So, you and know, that's I, another, I feel like, that's another thing that it. sucks is like knowing that. I mean, I fully believe if we had this team next year, now that they've all played together, now that they all know how each other, like the position each of them play in that team, that we would win an Addy. I fully believe that. If we had could have all the guys come back, it just sucks. Like yeah. I saw Michael's tweet earlier, it sucks that we're not going to see PJ <laughs> in a state uniform anymore. I know. I just. It's like all the excitement from the tournament makes you forget. Like, oh crap! Like this. Was, I know. This is the last yeah. game we're going to see them play him, Casey, and DJ, and it's it's just sad. Which I I, I want to ask you guys one question, and uh, I'll ask especially you this, Ken's, because you're the most positive state, one of the most positive state fans I know. And let me let us know in the chat too what y'all think, y'all. But if we had beaten Purdue, if we had found a way to beat Purdue, 
be Purdue. Um, would you honestly look at me in my eyes, Ken? It's not like bias aside, bias aside. Do you actually <laughs> I just, believe that state could beat UConn? I believe we could because I just don't see us making it to the national championship and not somehow pulling it out, pulling it out of our butt. Like I genuinely don't yeah. see it happening. Like I feel like if we made it from the Louisville game at the very jump of the ACC all the way to the national championship, I feel like we could somehow pull it out of our butt, but that means like every shot would have to fall. We'd have to play solid defense. No one could get hurt. No one could have foul trouble. Like it would have to be a perfect game. Well, and, and again, and, and the reason why I say that is Purdue, I could look at Purdue and say, all right, if you can stop Zach Eady and if you can make some baskets, you can win that game. It's really that simple. Like like guards, like, yeah, like whatever three points. They, and that was the other thing, too. Purdue was just – just they were shooting three-pointers really, really well against us as well. Um, but, but like, there, there, there was a recipe there. But with UConn, for us, like – you know, they have one of the best backcourts in the country. They have, you know, Klingon, who's one of the best bigs in the country. That dude's, you know, in my, I mean, he's, 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 he's amazing, you know, and there's a reason. And, I mean, and so we're like, just such a deep like team. Houston. That was like Houston at 83. And what happened there? Just saying. Yeah. Saying. Yeah. Well, were, but I, uh, but the it, it, of 83. So, well, it, but I mean, that's the thing though, too, is like, like now there's conversations about is, is UConn 2024, the greatest men's basketball team we've seen in the last 50 years. And it's a conversation for sure. Yeah, it's definitely a conversation. So yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, yeah, I mean, like I, I do, I do agree that like, you know, if, if we had made, if we had made it, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it sure, would have just had been a I mean, game. It would have been perfect game. Things yeah. would have had to gone our way. But like if UConn had come out and play, I mean, it's like just watching them last night, they handled Purdue, man. Like everything Purdue threw at them, they found a way to get at it. I mean, like they basically let Edie have his and still found a way to win. I, like thought, I thought that's how I was our game plan was going to go. Like letting Edie have what he – like just letting him do it and covering the three-point line. But yeah, we went with a different game plan. So, yeah. Nope, nope. Again, I mean, it, 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 it's just for me, like, you know, just, just watching UConn, you know, on, on Monday night, I was just sitting there like, like they are just, they're, they're so, they're so well coached, you know, like how, how they beat the press there late, late in the game. I mean, mm -hmm. they did not get caught whatsoever by Purdue. I mean, they really handled that press there late and that's all coaching. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah, uh, I mean, go ahead, Michael. I, I, they would have, they would have smoked us by 30. <laughs> Nothing, but I would have loved to seen it. I would have loved to seen it. <laughs> well, and, and I, I want to be clear too. That's like that's like the that's like you know if 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 every if both teams play normally, yeah, we probably would have lost by twenty. But yes, if, if we had played outstand, like yeah, like like it, it's it's our best game a is their worst game. Yeah, there's a chance for sure. So, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> Tactical saying, I, I can't believe uh, Mitch's Tavern is still still rocking, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, Carson saying, uh, men's basketball uh, would complete the sweep yeah. of UConn <laughs> with football, women's basketball, and possibly men's basketball if we had out, had the opportunity, um, but didn't quite have it. So, uh, and then uh, take a look at. Uh, I'll take a look at women's basketball. Here too, you know. Actually, too. Before we do that, let's go ahead and jump on some Tuffy's mailbag, and uh, let's jump. Let's answer some, some mailbag questions from you, the viewers, here real quick, and then we'll get to that. So let's jump on over. All righty. So, uh, Kens, I'll ask you this question first. Um, so, what basketball player from this team changed your opinion on them the most over the course of the season? That's a hard question. Mm -hmm. In the course of the season yeah. or from like regular season to postseason play? Like, so like as like the season started I like, to how they ended. I feel like there's not a specific one, but I got to go with Mo. Knowing what he had to go through in order to be out there every night, like not being able to eat all day, not being able to drink all day. It's just that's that does a lot to your body. So doing that for n 10 games. Um, and still having breaking the ACC record for rebounds in the ACC tournament, I think he absolutely balled out because in the regular season he had those like sparks, but it wasn't like a consistent thing. In the tournament, it was like he was our go-to rebounder, consistent blocker, all that stuff. And 
I, I think that's mine, honestly. Let, let me know in the chat, y'all, uh, who who y'all were, you know, who, who who's what player on this team, you know, you know, changed in terms of your opinion on them from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Uh, Michael, who would your vote be for? Yeah, I think it's I think it's Michael O'Connell. I mean, he like he saved our season. <laughs> he couldn't. Hit, yeah, besides the yeah, besides the Virginia <laughs> shot, he couldn't. He couldn't hit a hit a three all season. I think he was like twenty five percent or something, and then he yep. was over fifty percent, um, in the postseason. And yeah, I don't know. The offense just worked with him in there. Just yeah. works much better. I feel yeah. like you got to throw Breon in there too. <laughs> Breon yeah. actually shocked me during that Purdue game. Mm-hmm. He was balling. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's more of a shout out piece now. I mean, I'll be honest with you right here and now that if Breon passes on this team next year, I'll be shocked, honestly. Like, just not, not honestly because we don't want him, but like, just goes, like, he's just not going to be a, a, you know, he's not going to be a player for us. Yeah, he's, he's, he, he's not going to be a, multi, a double digit minutes game, a guy, a, he a guy be a game. Starter somewhere else, and not be like, yeah, he could yeah. easily, easily, easily start. Yeah, yeah. Now, so, so again, so, so I'm, I'm saying that, saying, you know, at, just at a, like, just for, for his sake, like, go, go somewhere, like, like with Alex Nunnally, which we'll talk about here in a second. Like, you know, go somewhere where he can go and and play decent minutes and play some basketball and stuff. You know, only come again when we get a guy injured. Um. But uh, yeah, so Razor saying, uh, my, I, I, I said beginning of the year, Mike Clown should yeah. have been our starting guard. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's the one thing which I hope for Keys next season that he can figure out a little bit earlier than just the first game of the ACC tournament of you know how the rotation should work with the team. Um, and uh, but I mean, so for me, I'll actually say somebody <coughs> different, not because I don't agree with Michael O'Connell for sure. Not that I don't agree with Muhammad Dr for sure, but I'll give you know props where other props is due, and I'm gonna say Ben Middlebrooks actually. I, I really, yeah. really loved Ben Middlebrooks' game over the postseason. Like he you know, held he his just, own against Ed too. He played some phenomenal defense against Ed. Phenomenal defense mm-hmm. against Ed. Great. And, and like he's just a guy that really just settled into his role, and he thrived in his role. Like he's not a guy yeah. that's gonna stand out to you in terms of his stat line. Um, He's not a guy that's going to stand out to you on film necessarily in terms of like skill set, but like he can get the job done. Whatever, whatever coach asks you to do, he's going to go out there and get it done. And against Purdue, he was asked to go and, and hold down Edie while DR and Burns were dealing with, you know, foul trouble and, and, you know, rest and things like that. Mm-hmm. And he definitely did his own for sure. I, yeah. I also I, feel like you got to give Casey a shout out. Like, yeah, I mean, from last year being our offensive star to this year, not really making this like not really sh- making the threes that he usually would or the scoring like he usually would, but his defense, yeah, saved our butts in a lot of game, and I think that that was a big key piece for him. So, well, yeah. and, and I, I and, and so here's why I kind of push back on that, Kansas, is that that if the question was like you know who do we give props to generally just just specifically for the postseason. Yeah, but since the question is more basically like who throughout. basically impressed you throughout the season, like, you know, beginning the season, cutting a season, like, I was expecting this guy to break off, man, be like, you know, a, you know, 15, 16 point per game player, you know, plus the defense, like, you know, hitting on three. I mean, the, you know, this guy was a career, you know, high 30 to 40 percent, you know, three point shooter. And just, you know, this year offensively, he just struggled, you know, just wasn't quite where we expect him to be. Now, I mean, he still played his part, no doubt about it. Huge shout out to Casey, you know, he's my guy. Um, you he's know, the only guy on the free throw line that I'm like, this is automatic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only guy on our team that I know is going to make him. That too. O'Connell, um, O'Connell was pretty automatic, but he just yeah. didn't get there a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, you know, and unfortunately, you know, I feel bad for him to go out. I mean, played 32 minutes, got 0 for 5, you know, from the field, uh, you know, and then the one three-pointer he shot was an air ball. So, technically, it was considered was a tough. turnover, you know, like, uh, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, like, you know, just it, it's just more disappointing for sure that, you know, he, he couldn't do more to help us. Um, because, I mean, unfortunately, once Michael O'Connor went out, it was kind of just the DJ Horn show. Um, yeah, which I mean, you know, it it, sh- it should have been. I mean, like at that point, I mean, because again, DJ Horn throughout the whole postseason, really season in general, for the most part, has been our best player. So, yeah. um, best our best shooter. So yeah, go for it. But, um, anyway, um, 
So, uh, so tactical asked the question is MJ Rice still on the team? Um, so, I mean, as far as I know, uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, he's still on the team. Uh, now keeping in mind that just like with Cam Woods, which again, we'll talk about here in a second as well. Uh, I mean, basically the transfer portal rule is basically out the window in terms of where oh, yeah. you know, if you transfer twice, like now it's, you don't have to sit out anymore. So, I mean, MJ Rice could still just go and transfer again. Um, so, you know, we'll see, but I actually am saying here too, like that I'm kind of okay. Either way, if he comes back, like, cool. Why? Because he's a ridiculously talented player. I mean, we saw his potential in the Reynolds game. Um, but on the other side, I'm saying, you know, he's not getting paid a little bit of money to play basketball in NC state. Yeah. So, you know, if he leaves, I'm sitting here saying, well, I mean, like, cause kind of the other side, like, like now you kind of have to prove yourself a little bit to us a little bit. You know, uh, just because, I mean, again, we gave you a lot of money. And so, like, now you need to prove that you're worth that, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a business now, you know. It's a business. Yeah. So, I think go, go ahead, I, there's definitely no harm in keeping him on the team if he wants to stay. Because, I mean, he's got more upside than pretty much anybody you could get out of the portal to, you know. For sure. Be, be that 11th, 12th, 13th guy on your roster. Yeah. Which is, I, I imagine, where... He's going to start unless, you know, something crazy happens. But yep. um, he's definitely worth keeping around. I don't, I don't think, you know, when, like you said, it's a business. So some players, you know, <laughs> there's decisions made on them. But I think yep. he's one you keep around and just see what happens. Yep. Yep. Nope. Uh, so uh, so I think that kind of answers that mailbag question. So uh, real, real quick, I'm going to take two, two seconds and talk about uh, – sorry, I said two, two two seconds and uh, talk about the players that have announced that they have left uh, during the season. And now uh, we'll start off with LJ Thomas who announced that he is transferring minutes from NC state to Austin PA. And uh, you know, you know, just uh, LJ is just one of those guys. I think kind of a little bit like, like, like Breon where he's solid player. Like, you know, he can hit shots where needed, you know, he, he can fill minutes where needed, but in terms of being, again, a, a, a routine guy, a guy that, you know, every single night has double-digit minutes or is a starter, he's just not going to be that guy for us. And, uh, you know, it just sucks that he, he didn't get to experience that Final Four run. <laughs> like, he left yeah. right before the ACC tournament started. Well, <laughs> that was his choice. <laughs> yeah, that just yeah, sucks. <laughs> I know. Well, and, I mean, and, and again, I don't – like, I think, you know, there's not necessarily, like, a rule in place, but I like – Typically, you know, if you were on the roster, you get a ring. That's just that's just like a typical like like thought process. Like for example, yeah. like NFL, like if if a guy gets traded halfway through the season, then you know he'll still get a Super Bowl ring or whatever. You know, after if they win the Super Bowl that year. And so, so for me, like yeah, like Lex should get his get his props for sure. Again, I mean, he was still a part of the team. He was still you know a guy that played minutes, a guy that was involved. You know, a guy that we never really heard anything that's like you know you know, bad, uh, from so, or about, so yeah, no, I mean, give the guy, you know, his props, but yeah, it definitely sucks that, yeah, he couldn't go and experience that, that moment for sure. Uh, get the championship shirts, championship I hats and like, go travel, like experience that. I yeah. Like, him watching that up. It's like crap. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, but, and then my guy, Alex Dunnelly got to give a shout out there next man. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 junior, which again, y- so, so I kind of maybe asked that question, Michael, is that because we were talking about it now, um, like, you know, I put out the tweet, you know, recognizing DJ Burns, uh, Casey and DJ Horn uh, as seniors and, you know, saying thank you guys for what you did for the program, all that, and yeah. didn't put Alex Nunnally. And there was kind of some pushback uh, from some people saying, well, what about Alex Nunnally? <laughs> and te- like, like he's listed on the NC State page as a junior, and but he was recognized at senior day. So, I mean, yeah. Do you think maybe that? Well, you. I think if you know you're leaving, you can choose to get recognized. Well, it's so like, that 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 was yeah. my thought. It was like so maybe he knew all along he was going to go transfer after the season. Yeah, yeah, probably. But I feel like that's odd, though. I feel like that's not necessarily a normal thing. But like, hey, I no, it's it's first, not so. normal. But uh, I don't know. I think it's like it's like um you know like one and done guys like surefire NBA prospects sometimes they'll do yeah. senior day. <laughs> Yep. Nope. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, Ken's uh, uh, Alex not only the 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 goat. I mean, you know, the dude's a cool dude. But never, never, never play. But but he's he's an awesome guy. 
So happy for them. <laughs> Love that family. Yeah. They're sweet. Oh yeah. No, the whole not only family is awesome. Um, so, uh, and then, and then last, I got to give, uh, news today that, uh, uh, transfer guard Cam Woods, uh, has officially mm-hmm. put his name in the portal, which is crazy to think about. Cause, uh, uh, this will now be his fourth school that he's been yeah, to during so. his during his college career. Yep. Well, because that was the whole thing about with Cam was that he was a two time transfer. Um, but but there was a, a you know a, a window where the you know where that that hold got lifted that he could play in those like two or three games that one week or whatever. Um, and uh, so yeah, you know, so he put his name in the portal, um, which. I'm guessing because because we the only thing we know as of right now for next season is that O'Connell's coming back, um, Diaz and, and Middlebrook still have another year, um, so we'll be. I don't think we necessarily have heard if Jaden Taylor's coming back necessarily, right? Not yet. No, but I, I yeah, I would, would assume he is. But well, and so that's my question: is so does Cam Woods leaving kind of almost maybe make the case? Uh, that it could. Yeah. It could be an indicator of yeah Taylor staying because yeah he would probably play the same kind of the same position there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, because looking at the the roster for next year right now, so you got um, as of right now you have Jaden Taylor, Michael O'Connell, Breon Pass, Dennis Parker Jr., Paul McNeil Jr., Trey Parker, and then on the front court you have Modiara, Ben Meadowbrooks, uh, Papa Papa Ross. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and uh, Brandon, Bigger. Hundley. I and, love and then, and then Brand- Brandon Hundley Hatfield. So yeah. I want to talk real, real, real quick about Ernest Ross. Uh, as obviously that was a whole fiasco that happened <laughs> on uh, on Monday. Uh, was it Monday? No, it was Tuesday. Yeah, no, it was Monday. It was Monday. It was Monday. Um, where Pack Pride came out with the article that uh, Ernest Ross entered his name in the transfer portal. But yet I saw it like, like it was, it, first of all, I mean, it helped too that we were with Ryan Williams when all this happened uh, from IPS. Uh, so, but I mean, like it was interesting to how inside pack sports, like nobody else really like, well, I think maybe the Wolfpacker tweeted something, uh, but, um, but yeah. I guessed it. They didn't tweet out like, you know, and, 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 and then- really pack pride that, 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 that article was 20 minutes old and IPS still hasn't said anything. So that was odd. Um, but then we heard rumblings that Ernest Ross was saying that no, I haven't transferred um, yet. And, uh, <laughs> oh, so, so confused. and then he, and then he and posted then, it on his Instagram, yeah, say, saying no, I, I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So, uh, but what up, Macon? What up, guys? What up, man? Good to have you, man. Glad, dude. I'm glad to be here. I was I'm sorry I'm late getting on, but I was like, man, I got 20 minutes. I can still get on this thing. So. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I know. And uh, you're not in your normal setup or your normal gear, but hey, we'll take it. We'll have no, to I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But uh, it's got to get some work done around the house. But uh, I had to be here for this one. So, yeah. Well, well, we were just talking real, real quick about Ernest Ross. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> you, like, what, I mean, like, what's your thoughts? I mean, do you think, do you think, uh, you know, because we were talking about how Pack Pride Posty was in the transfer portal, but then Ernest yeah. Ross came out and said, I'm not. What, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, it could be a thing where he just doesn't want it out public. So until he announces on his own timing, yep. but it could be he's not. I mean, I mean, that's I, how that's MJ what I get. Was too. You, said, you said what? That's like M- MJ Morris's situation, right? So it's just kind of like let let the guy do his thing, and got other sites who j- want to kind of jump on that or whatever, kind of annoying. But um, you know, they're all doing their job. But like, it's the guy like Ernest. My opinion of Ernest is. Um, I mean, he's been there for three years, and I wonder if he'll ever crack the rotation. He still hasn't yet. I mean, he does have the classic thing that Michael just did there, right? That, but Michael's doing it better than I could. But <laughs> to me, man, like he's a he's a great locker room guy. He's a great guy for the. I mean, he, when he comes in, he does con, he does contribute some. But if I'm being all honest, I don't know if he'll crack the rotation next season. I, I mean, I mean, you're bringing in Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Uh, he was probably a five. Ernest is a four. So maybe he rotates with a guy like Diara because you probably have Middlebrooks and um, Huntley Hatfield at the five. Um, maybe at times you play Diara at the four. So maybe there's something there. But I also feel like the guy like Dennis Parker, he might play the three, four at times. Um, I don't know. It'd be really interesting to see what they do there. I think he could have a role as a depth piece 
it's just a matter of does he want to be a depth he does he want to go to you know a different school where he can really get some playing time and you know play out his last year of basketball or two so uh yeah. i i would personally i want to be as good of a team as we can be and if we can build the depth and if there's honestly and this goes for any player on the team if there's a better player out there i want to go get that player and that's not an earnest statement. That's a team statement. I want NC State to win. Yeah. So if we can get a better piece at the four, or so let's say we don't, but we just – we just um, maybe that's about as good as we can do. I want any of these guys – and I'm th- and I am thinking of guys like Ernest or Breon or, heck, we, all, we saw Cam Woods. He was only here for a year, right? And he's already gone. Uh does MJ Rice do the same thing? He didn't do anything this year. I never realized he may have some different circumstances, like Cam has some different circumstances. But if those guys aren't impactful, I don't know if they need to be. I I, I wouldn't be so upset that they left, put it that way. If a guy like Ben Middlebrooks left, for instance, who has proven to be a huge contributor, I would be like, okay, that would, that really sucks. Or um uh, Jaden Taylor or somebody like that. Like I would be like, man, those guys played major minutes and were big contributors. Um, but you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens with these guys. I will say it's, if guys go into the portal and they leave, no matter if it's, you know, say it's, so, I mean, it's any of these guys, I think States in the best position they've ever been in from a transfer portal standpoint to go get the best talent they can get. To me, you have to strike now while the iron is hot. And they need to go get, I mean, anybody and everybody, if that means it hurt, there's some hurt feelings and guys want to transfer. It's kind of like, I'm sorry. It's business. Like you're right. But it's, I want to win. I want, I want so badly we, to be we felt it. We felt it and we don't want it to end now. Right. I mean, I want to go back to the final four if I can help it. I mean, like why not NC state next year? Like we talk about, why not us? Why not us next year? We could do it. And it take it just getting the best talent because I don't want to settle. Right. If we think, we really want to roll with Ernest and Breon and I'm trying to think who's other depth pieces on the team. Those are probably the two names I can Jay think Taylor. of. M- MJ. Well, Jay, MJ, Taylor. Jay and Taylor, I wouldn't necessarily call them a depth piece, maybe not at this point, especially with Casey leaving. But, yeah. um, you know, MJ, Cam left. Um, then I, I, I just want the best plays I can get. I want to get the best talent. I want to capitalize on the final four run, go make, go bring back NC State like the guys already did and just kind of continue to build on that. Especially now that Kevin Keats can go into these homes. What does he have that – what does Carolina and Duke have right now that Keats doesn't from like a resume standpoint? Like John Shire and Hubert Davis have nothing on Kevin Keats right now. I mean, they, they are it's, – or it's even playing field, I should say. Yeah. Like, yeah, John Shire, you you did some nice he things so he far. Yeah, he he what? He got a – he won the tournament. So, but he didn't make the final four. Right. Shire so, did, yeah. Right, but he didn't make the final four. Right? He made the Elite Eight, and he got beat out by NC State. Carolina, yeah, they won. They went to a national championship game, and that is huge for them. That's great. Uh, but it's like, you didn't win an AC championship. And, championship. and so State's got both right now. State's got a final four and an AC championship, and they beat both teams to do it. And I just, I just don't think Keats can go in there and has to cower to – a UNC or Duke negative recruiting and like yeah. this prestige. It's like, well, we just did it. So yeah. what, like what makes this any, you know, worse off than those guys. So yeah, it's exciting. Well, well and, and razor brings up, I mean, you know, I think that we won't have an issue with selling season tickets next year for sure. Uh, no, I've, for- I've already, Lynn already Arena. talked to me. Yeah, go ahead. PNC arena is about to be insane with students, especially. Mm-hmm. The way that yeah. they packed out Hillsborough Street, I know that they're just ready to be back in PNC. Yeah, I um, I talked Lindsay talked to me uh back in January. We walked into the Virginia Tech game, and for, she was like on her own. She's like, you know, if you want to get season tickets next year, you can. I was like, what? <laughs> so, no. um, so I was like, point, so I was did. gonna try to do that. <laughs> you said what? And at that point, you probably didn't. But. Yeah, I'm well, yeah, I know. But even then, it was like, it's, I it, it mean. At this point, I kind of want to because I want yeah. to. I love college basketball. I love I love tobacco basketball, and it's exciting, like you said, Michael. 
Yeah. And then, and then we had another question, uh, part of our mailbag saying, uh, uh, from Cam nine six two nine saying, uh, what does our men's basketball NIL situation look like this off season? Uh, as in, how much cash? And uh, the one thing which I will say is from listening, you know, to to sources that basically like we had, you know, roughly around like a million dollars in NIL to to basically distribute among the on the players. basketball side or everywhere, basketball, 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 basketball to to give to the players. And, um, so now I mean, I mean, I mean, basically kind of just, just to kind of like, like make like a low and a high is that, I mean, so like we're right now at 1 million per what we had for last year, you know, Calipari, they just, Arkansas just told him that he's going to have $5 million to give to players, you know, as SEC's yeah. fit in, in, in a given year. So where Arkansas. are we going to fall in Arkansas. between that? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yep. So, so where are we going to fall between yeah. that? I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would say, I mean, with the donations that have come in, like, you know, we shouldn't have any issue what, right now getting at least to that $2 million mark, I would say. I mean, in terms of what we could offer. Well, I mean, it's on the fans, right? As much as the fans yeah. want to give is what we can do, right? And so, I mean, it's going back to people complaining about Dave Doran with the football program. It's like, if you, you say, well, I won't give until we start winning something. I mean, like, you had one AC championship with you. Now, you just did it in basketball, right? Yeah, so. Right. That yeah, argument's out the window now. If you can't donate to a thing that just went to the final four and AC championship, like then you're never going to donate. And I want to I just just remove yourself from the conversation. So yeah. but I know I am. I want to. So yep. Nope, absolutely. Uh M Michael, any uh, thoughts there? Yeah, I mean if we could get to two million, uh that would be great. You know, um I think that would probably that probably put you in the top top five of the ACC with $2 million. I mean, look at the investments that UNC did on RJ Davis and Armando Baycott. Like I granted that NIL dollars um, from like a, their own stuff, like from uh, sponsorships and that kind of thing. But I mean, I would almost argue poor investment a little bit or not as great investment. Maybe not poor is a strong word, but like that's a lot of money they were throwing out those guys. And I feel like I remember hearing something like half a million dollars. Um, I don't know if it's for each of those guys or for both combined or what, but had to be for um, each of those, at least. Had to have been at least. Yeah, I mean, like, are we you, sure you he wasn't nothing? making a million? You, you sure he wasn't making at least a million? I think Baycott was yeah. at a million. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that might be that might have included all like the sponsorships and that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. That's why I say that. Um, I, gotcha. I just no tax. You know, you know, did, in Carolina were they Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight? Uh, elite, elite Eight. They lost uh, to Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, sweet sixteen. They, they lost in the sweet sixteen. Yeah. So, so, so they have a sweet sixteen and no championship conference championship. Do they have? They were first in the regular season, so I guess they have that. But yeah. I mean, I was just thinking the other day, like fans of the casual fans, they don't care what you do in the regular season, right? Like NC State had a really bad regular season, and it doesn't matter at this point, right? It, it, it's all about the postseason. So two trophies, uh, Shut right? Two, you get, uh, two trophies. You've got what three banners yeah. now? Three mm -hmm. banners. I mean, and it actually, you've got three trophies, right? Because you've got two Final Four trophies, and you've got a uh, ACC championship trophy and three for banners and women's. for men's and women's. You mean? Yeah, I'm combining men's and women's. I, I figured that's what McKenzie was doing. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah no, agree there. So so again, just you got guys striking. Go, got to go out and get a big time guard for sure. That is priority number one. <laughs> Go get go get a fifteen plus point per game guy, somebody that yeah. can, you know replace DJ Horn. Um, I feel like that's going to be the hardest. That and, yeah. yeah, that's going to be the hardest guy to replace is Horn. Right. Agreed. Yeah, and, and again, you, you, you can't look. I, yeah, you can't you can't look at anybody we have on our roster right now but, to be that guy next season. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think yes, replacing Horn is hard, but I think it's an, almost an easy sell for kids. I mean, he did it. Yes, He's done it three years in a row yeah. with, with Joyner and then Horn. He's like, yeah, you want to come out of the transfer portal and be our star guard? Like, yeah. Make all this NIL money? I mean, him yeah. and DJ Burns, they racked in like five or six NIL deals just in three weeks. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's huge. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, so, you know, uh, making uh, any, any last thoughts here real quick about men's basketball? I want to talk a little bit about women's here. Yeah, just yeah, I guess yeah, your thoughts on the game. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking, yeah, yeah. man, for words, it's special. Uh it's 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 um I just think it 
it means the the world to state fans what what this team did for us and amen I don't think you can put it into words what it means to some guys, people emotionally, for the investment we we have had as fans into the team and program and the commitment at times. You know, I know a lot of fans have been really hard on teams and want to check out, and a lot of fans have. But I really think deep down inside that they've really been, they've always been there and wanting them to win. It's just been heartbreak after heartbreak. And this team yeah. did something that no team has ever done, um, except maybe UConn. Right. And thought, you know, 13 years ago, mm-hmm. uh, it's just, it was magical, uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, it was, it was really special. I mean, I'm just, I'm just so pumped that we can do that. And it's that the whole, I think that mantra of why not us, that is really embodies the run. It's like, why, why not NC state? Like, why do we have to cower to UNC and Duke? Like, why do we have to do that? Like, I don't think fans do generally, but it's like, the perception, like I know, we you only got through tweets of the week, but how UNC and Duke are ranked ahead of us, like it, 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 I get the regular season, I get that, and maybe that's maybe it's all encompassing, but like we beat Duke twice. How are they ranked ahead of us? I don't get that, and I feel like the perception. So, to me, what State can do now, it's, it's, it's kind of bringing back the program to what it was and they, but they have to capitalize on it and it's, it can't be like a one and done thing I, to me. If you can go back to tournament next year, make a sweet 16, at least like that's huge for the program. Cause then you can be like final four, sweet 16. Yeah. So, I mean, or something like that. I think yeah. just keep doing that. You don't have to do anything as amazing. And I don't think you may ever do anything as amazing as that, except win a national championship, which I think yeah. state can do, but yeah. just, I, I, I will never forget it. I will never forget it. So. I don't, yeah. And I don't think the guys understand what it meant to state fans. Like, I know that they probably felt like it was a magical run too, but I just want them to understand like what they did for fans, like big fans like us, like not being able to experience what 83 was like and finally being able to say, oh, now I know what my grandma's talking about when she says, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, the same yeah. thing to my family. Like, I kind of, I've only ever heard stories and now it's like, yeah, now this, I live this through kind it. of this must have been what it felt like. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. this is pretty fun, honestly. Yeah, I like winning. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's keep it up. And and William too, I want to be clear too about what we did that that Megan is talking about the U that hasn't been done since UConn 2011 is basically a team that was not going to make the uh, NCAA tournament unless they won the conference tournament and then found a way to get to the Final Four, which UConn won the national championship, but even just winning. Basically nine games in a yeah. row has uh, that's never been done before. Um, uh, five games in five fine. days too. Oh, well, exactly that too. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely uh, very very special to say the least for sure. Um, so, uh, uh, and man, what was I going to uh, say to you? But women's basketball. Um, yeah, yeah, but women's basketball. Well, here, actually, one stat I want to give you. So, so between men's and women's basketball, seven of the eight teams that were in the final four. Finished top four in the AP poll. I want to just point that out. That, that in women's basketball, the final four was uh, South Carolina, Iowa, UConn, NC State, which yep. I don't really have any gripes with that. Uh, yep. But with AP men's, it was uh, uh, UConn, Purdue, Alabama, Houston, who yeah, which Houston I lost in the Sweet 16. Houston. Again, if you're final four, that should be where you landed. Well, which, you know. Yeah, it's. Well, I will say to be fair to Houston, it's hard to ding them with that with when it's purely yeah, based yeah. on the guy, their best player getting injured. But right, yeah, four is also high. So right. at that I point, agree. so no, I, I agree. I I think I think if you put us at like eight, I think that would been fair. There were I only think. four teams in Arizona. I I, I yeah, feel like they should be. Four. But Candy's like, I'd put us at one. I'm right? I don't know. Know. There's still. <laughs> there were only yeah. Four. Teams there. Yeah, uh, UConn. <laughs> sure, they can be two, but NC State is yeah. one. Yeah, you yeah, right. already asked me that question. If I think that we could beat UConn, <laughs> if we were to beat them, yeah, yeah, Ma- Macon, yeah. You, I'll, I'll ask you that real quick, Macon. <laughs> if we had played UConn, you think we would have had a shot? I'm gonna give the McKenzie answer. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Right? I feel like if we make it there, there's no way we lose. Like, oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, I, here's the thing about UConn. They don't have a single like star, in my opinion, on their team. Like Klingon. Maybe, but he's not yeah. a star. Like he's a really good basketball player, 
and they have a team of really good basketball players with a really good coach and they they work well together they understand each other and they play well like like the most outstanding player was tristan newton who was a point guard at ncu like right like there's not they're not studs they're just really great basketball really good basketball players and 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 really well coached really really well right it's the whole system it's the program right so um yeah but yeah i'll I'll stop there so yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, but yeah, hey, don't worry, Kansas Razors with you. Absolutely. Uh, 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 he was, he was the fourth team period. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, women's basketball. So, um, so once again, I mean, Isaiah James, uh, you know, didn't play, you know, she wasn't lights out. Like she usually was, but she didn't have a bad game. I mean, six for 17 from the field, three from 10 from three, uh, five for six free throws, uh, two rebounds, uh, three turnovers, zero assists, 20 points total. Um, so solid. Uh, and then River Baldwin also had a solid game as well, shooting five or twelve from the field. Uh, so got twelve points, nine rebounds. So g- great game for her. But the biggest thing, and I'm not necessarily going to put it on one or even two players, but Sanaya Rivers just killed us, man. Like, yeah, she was. It, it was. Just yeah, she had a bad night. night. She had a bad night. She had a bad night mm-hmm. for sure. Just I mean, funny. I feel like all the eyes looking on her because she used to play at South Carolina. I feel like playing against your old team is a lot of pressure on you. So yeah. yeah. Well but also too but that's also that's also a moment I feel like that you know you would you rise, up. Like you either, rise up. Yeah I feel like it's either one or the yeah. other. Yeah it was you gonna either have to shine like, in those moments. Yeah. If yeah. You have a lot of eyes looking on you and you're gonna ball out like River did the first time we played Florida State or the second mm-hmm. time when yeah. it wasn't really your best game. So yeah yep. Yeah I, I honestly I I, I kind of got the more impression necessarily of South Carolina, but I think the I think this this the stage just got to her a little bit. I think the moment was a little too big for her at the at that time. Like, yeah. and it really could be that she was just missing her shots, but it really felt like she was like whoa the whole time. And um and that's I mean I don't want to say it's okay. It, it I, I put it happens to players, but it can't be okay for your like you like it can't happen for your star. Yeah. And um, I wish she like one for eight or something like that. I mean, yeah, she was she was two for eleven from the field. Two for she eleven, had five, she had five turnovers. You know, yeah. like was, yeah, it's just a bad that, day. Bad day was the turnovers. Yeah, the turnovers were bad day. Bad. bad day for her. I mean, and I, th- I think that was the third quarter that just killed us. We like scored like five points, and they had like twenty something. The third quarter kills us every game this season, and that's like the only quarter where. If we get behind, there's no coming back. The third so then, so then, so then, to me, is that a? And I'm going to take a different approach. To it, is that a coaching thing? Because why is that? If that, if that's, if you're saying now, Westmore is a great coach. Obviously, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad, but like, if you're pointing out there's a trend of coming out of halftime, we just suck a lot of times. Then why is that? Is that a? It's a mental thing. I don't. What is that? I, I mean, don't know because I remember doesn't... in years past, like it, Westmore's teams were like insane in the third quarter like i thought so too i don't yeah. like oh, know yeah this season alone though it's just like it, we yeah. all without this quarter we struggle in and then we come back in the fourth and add to our lead or get back to winning so yeah yep so <laughs> you know kind of, kind of oh go ahead go ahead let's talk on what I was like, South Carolina is one of those teams where you just can't have that happen. Like that's kind of like yeah they're gonna bury you for that yeah UConn, you have to play a perfect game like you're you yeah. can't have a struggle quarter against them. Yeah. So, you know, kind of looking at this team now for next year. So, so you're losing River Baldwin and Mimi who are your seniors, but you can, you can get everybody else back. Um, you know, I think Isaiah is a player that I don't know how much money we have towards NIL, but I think Isaiah, you pay whatever she wants in order to keep her. Uh, you let her fill her. in the check. Like, yeah, like, yeah, you gotta get, you, you gotta keep Isaiah. Um, yeah. well, Arch, she's coming. Go ahead. Bacon. I'm gonna say the other part of it too is that helps you is that she's already transferred one time. If she transferred, Zaya? Second, sorry, I'm 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 blanking. I'm thinking Sanaya. Blank. I don't know why I'm thinking Zaya. that. Azaya. Oh. Now that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Azaya. I mean, yeah, I mean Sanaya, sure. But I mean, like, I mean, she's not gonna be Azaya. Yes. No, nobody's gonna be opening up checkbooks. Nobody's gonna open up checkbooks for Sanaya. They will for Azaya, though. UConn, LSU, they'd open up their checkbooks mm-hmm. for Azaya, who just lost Haley Van Lith. Just yeah, well, I know. I, I, oh yeah, yeah. They'll open their books. So, 
Um, that one shocked me too. Haley Van Lift's transferring again. I, I did know. not see that coming. Well, she, again, is, she a gra- I mean, is she a graduate? I mean, well, because if, she, if, she a graduate, if, she, if she's a graduate, she's second time transferring, that would be my first thought is because that way she doesn't have to sit out. Well, well but nobody has to sit out anymore. They got rid of that. Thing, nobody has to sit out anymore. That, 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 that rule is basically gone, unfortunately. For like, like, men's and women's, I forgot about that. that like, yeah, that's why all, Cam Woods. That's, yeah. that's why Cam Woods. Tra- that's why Cam Woods transferred again because he can go. I did not realize that. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. On. People yep. are just gonna be. You're not gonna know who your team is until. Mind just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude. There's gonna um, be some player out there who just transfers every year just to be a joke about it. So. Well, they could be that that uh, that that quarterback that you know started off as Southern Cal, that went to Georgia, that went to West Virginia, that went yeah. to Rice. Uh, JT Daniels. Like, like, JT Daniels. Like, is that his? Well, I now third or fourth. I I saw they uh, um. There's a football player, Bear Alexander. He went to four different high schools all four years. Then he went to Georgia his freshman year, went to USC his sophomore year, and now he's back in the portal. So he's going to be on his seventh school in seven years. Damn, that's, that's insane. crazy. That's um, awesome. but 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 real quick, like you know, kind of looking at next year. So so again, you're getting you're you're hopefully keeping Isaiah. Uh, you're you still got Sanaya Madison. You still got hopefully Zoe Brooks. Uh, you know, and then you're bringing in uh, uh, Jones, uh, the phenomenal guard. Samaria uh, Jones. Samaria, Samaria Jones. Jones. Yeah, the phenomenal guard. So I mean, I feel like you gotta feel pretty good about. You, the, you bring in Tilda Trigger too. Don't forget that for to her. Yeah. The, yeah. Yep, that's right. The 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 um the forward the, from Sweden. Forward, forward from Sweden. But I mean, I feel like you got to get what two more, two more forwards in in the portal, for sure. Yeah. Um, like like you know. Yeah, it, I mean, you're losing two. You know, losing two. Said bringing in trigger, but who knows how that's going to translate to? Yeah. Yeah. Here, so I would say, yeah, you need two. Or, or you definitely got to go and hit a home run with one. Let's put it that right. way. You got, you got to either get two or you. Gotta I think go Maddie Cox will, will play a part next year. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just. I wouldn't be though surprised if she transferred though, honestly. But we'll see. But you know, uh, just because again, like like Maddie Cox, she's a great rotational player. But again, I don't like. Is she ever going to be a starter? I don't know. We'll see. Two kind of to be determined. Yeah. But Depends on who you bring in the portal, right? I, well, exactly. It depends who you get, but yeah, yeah. yeah. But outside of Zoe Brooks, I think she was our best freshman. Oh yeah, you got it. You got to keep yeah. Zoe. I feel like yeah. Zoe is just gonna keep improving and improving and improving. Yeah. Well, She's a so so that's my question though. Is so because I mean I'm assuming with with uh, ZJ, say, say it again, Macon. Zamaria. Zamaria. Zamaria Jones. Zamaria Jones. Yep. Uh like, you know, you're gonna play her. I mean, she's she's not gonna be on the bench, a player that talented. So where does Zoe Brooks fit in? You know, like where do they both fit in? Zamaria and, and Zoe, no, I, where do they fit in? No, I think Jones say is on the bench. You think so? At least well, to start well, the year. Well, but I mean like like does she get rotational minutes like Zoe? I think yes. Well, I don't know. That's even yeah. I don't know. Oh. It'll be interesting. It, it, that that's definitely going to be a coaching thing. You know, how do you fit from the guard side both those players combined with Sanaya, with Madison, and with Zion? That's a good. That's a good problem to have, though. It is <laughs> a great problem. Hey, it's also, you go get you get the absolute best talent you can get, and you don't care about her feelings. And yeah. it's purely business. The goal is to win. You should want to win. Player A, B, or C on the team. And can you blame me as the coach? Like I'm going to go get the best players. And it works out for you if it great. If it doesn't, great. I mean, like it. it I'm sorry, but if go the get best, the best yeah, player. And and yeah, I, I mean, I mean, Ray's are saying right That's here. True. Like I, I think Brooks knows that it's uh, her team after next year when. Uh, yeah. All of them, Madison, Sky, and Desire, all gone. Yeah, that's a, a, again a, a great point. Right. Absolutely right. Like you know, like because right. in two years there. you're looking at a backcourt of Zoe Brooks and and then Jones. Jones so like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty darn good. So, yeah. um, and Zoe still had like it wasn't where she didn't have many minutes this season. She still played a heck of a lot. Which so. I saw, which I saw a preseason poll for next year that had that again. It's a very very early one, but it's still had NC State at eight, which I'm like eight preseason well, that's, next that's, year. That's, that's pretty low in my opinion, but yeah. I mean, well, you got to also remember what they were predicted to be this past year. 
So in my in my opinion, it is an improvement from what we were we were this season. Yeah. Um so to me, they think the floor is raised for NC State and the floor is a is an elite level team compared yeah. to this past season. It was like a yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that, I, I get your coming from Lane. I get you're coming from. There were only four teams in Cleveland too. We should both be. You know what? Let's make men's women's teams number one in both AP polls and just the whole season. Call the season. Yeah, (laughs) I love it. But you and season last. Yeah. Yeah. So, but and preseason polls for next year mean nothing with the transfer portal. Yeah. Right. You can win now. You can win now. Yep. Nope. Absolutely. Um, so, so real, real quick, I uh, just wanted to spend like like 10 minutes here and talk about uh, the spring games. We haven't really spoken about that um, oh, so yet. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, so real quick, uh, uh, making, uh, you know, I mean, thoughts. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, I saw that tweet uh, earlier about, uh, you know, where it had like, like the muscled wolf. I'm mean, sorry, the, like the muscled dog and it said, you know, post post transfer portal it's offense and then it had like the <laughs> skimpy dog and it said post portal defense and yeah. i mean i i really kind of say that by saying sean brown didn't play davin van didn't play aiden white didn't play you yeah. know like that's your best player at each of the three levels like <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i mean did, did, did you have any worry at all watching that game like or like what i need to go back and still rewatch it a little bit more i did rewatch most of it or some of it Okay. Uh, deep. I mean, no. I think if anything else, I think maybe, hopefully, you look at it as man, our offense is way yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, way better. Yeah, I mean, I like it in a while. I mean, <laughs> which the running backs look sweet, man. R- Waters, Raphael. You got Smothers, and then you still. I mean, Duke Scott. I mean. Whew, those guys look good. I don't know if there's much drop off, man, at that point. I mean, and they're different. So you have like in different situations, you can do that. Um, you could bring two. I wonder if there's any like three running back sets they could do because what happens sure. if you bring Waters, Raphael, and some others out there in one set? And it's just a rushing goal line kind of thing. I mean, that would be awesome. Or short line, or what I mean, and then I mean, I thought McCall looked precise um, or accurate. I mean, it's what I look for actually too. He was, he dealt the ball where it needed to go. Uh, he made the right reads in the in the small, simple game. He, um, you know, you look at the receivers. Like honestly, I probably didn't even really care too much to look at KC because he was like a known <laughs> quantity know, at this yeah. point. And you and honestly, him. did he he almost got overshadowed? This week, and purely because it's like, wow, look the at Noah Rogers. Look at Joe Lee, man. Joe Lee looks good. So, yeah. um, look at somebody. I mean, like, I know Grimes, Wesley Grimes had some nice plays. It's like we are going to be doing something special here, I think, on offense. And if the guys just get healthy on defense, it, 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 watch out ACC. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I really feel that way. But, and I thought I – thought, Vincent, Vincent, the new Kanoa Vincent, the new kicker. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think he someone said I didn't see it, but someone said he had a 50 yard field goal. Yeah, Dang, I don't see that. that's really it good. Is. You know, with Todd Goble, you're going to get really good special teams. Um, to me, it, like what it sounds like, the only piece they really need to go out and get is a nose tackle or defensive tackle. And when it's kind of like, let's roll, too. not even a starting, yeah. And, oh, I, 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 I didn't mention yeah. this guy. CJ Bailey, dude. I mean, he looks like he honestly he looks like a poor man's Lamar to me right now. I mean, I know it's like like he like from an ACC yeah, level Lamar, right? I'm not talking like Heisman <laughs> Lamar. I'm saying like he looks he kind of like looks like him. Yeah. Sorry, Mackenzie. Mackenzie, go ahead. Sorry. Like the great value Lamar, like not the yeah. Heisman yet. <laughs> not Heisman, right? I'm just saying, but he like, he kind of has the frame and the length and the lankiness of Lamar. He runs fast. He's not as quick twitch or anything like that. So that's why I say he's poor man's. But like, he's different compared to uh, Grayson. And mm-hmm. I do not feel bad if we had to go like a drop off from Grayson to him. If I felt like in that position, like I, I still think you maybe go try and get like a third string guy that you could say, hey, you come in next year, you battle out with CJ, pitch, pitch that, pitch it kind of like that. Um, but. I mean, I think state looks really good, man. And I and I 
yeah, I don't know. I think you, you got to see it like just like what you guys said. And Michael said you had your three, your best player on each defensive level out. And well, plus, so. I mean, I would Tony Gibson. I don't have any worries for. No, you trust him, right? He's yeah. one of those coaches that if the defense doesn't look good right now, if they're going to be stout by game one. Like that's the that's the position. I'd rather have questions for defense in the spring game than offense because, like, I put all I put all my trust. Yeah. In him, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Agreed. So, so this kind of leads to our our, our last uh, mailbag question, which I'll ask you, you know you, Michael. But you know, should we should CJ Bailey be our second string quarterback heading into <laughs> next season? And 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 the first thing which I'll say is that you know Razor said right here, he's our future. Everybody's saying he's our future. Yeah. Again, folks, with the transfer portal the way it is, we Who can't knows? talk about future yeah. at this point. We just can't. That not like, sucks. It's like you're sucks. Hyper- great point. Great it's, point, Layton. It, it's yeah. not what it was, but unfortunately, like, 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 I'm literally looking at next year alone. That's it. I'm looking at 2024. That's it. And simply, if Grayson McCall goes down, do I feel confident enough in CJ Bailey to run the offense to win us football games and to make plays when we, when we need it? And I'm leaving that up to the coaching staff, but I'm saying I have a really hard time doing that with a true freshman quarterback. That's my only thing. Yeah. He's a true freshman. So, you know, you're you're asking when you go, you know, to Georgia Tech, when you play at UNC, like you're asking him to at Clemson, play. at Clemson. Mm-hmm. If well, you, if well, you get well, yeah, yeah. Ben God, ben God forbid, did. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ben Philly did, yeah. So, at yeah. Tennessee, yeah. Western yeah. Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, but again, I mean, like it, it, it's more, it's only, it's literally like, like there's no worries about his skill is simply that he's a true freshman. That's it. Right. It's just experience. I, yeah. I don't know. I, it's a fair point, Lane. It's like, I think, he, yes, I, if I was the coaches, I would probably go get another guy. Mm-hmm. Just if you've got a scholarship available, I mean, it can't hurt. You're probably not going to get somebody much better skill wise than no. Bailey, but you know, you may get somebody with the experience who has played some college football before, yeah. so that could be beneficial. Like, could you go get a guy like Jack Chambers was two years ago? Like, you know, I know yeah. he didn't necessarily work well, out in terms of like skill level, but like a guy who's a proven yeah. starter, won us a guy the game, who, won us the Florida State game, yeah. Well, and a guy who would come to NC State from a like a group of five program to say, hey, I just right. want to go and like experience power FCS, five football for yeah. my last year. Yeah. Like, you know, like I, yeah, I, I mean, I could see it. I could see it. I just think. uh you know, with with Bailey, there's a clear cut path to next year right now. Like, yeah, sure. it's great in the oh, one and done. I don't yep. see him being like a, in a position of a guy who's like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna play, I'm gonna ha- not be able to play this one year, and you know that's I'm um, take with you guys, yep. and I'm gonna leave. And I really don't think he's gonna be like that because I just think it's a different situation, unique for him. But yeah, is um, has his whole friend group right there with him. Mm-hmm. And like Noah Rogers and all them, like they all came in together. So, yeah, I think I think even if you get another quarterback, I think you still say that Bailey is number two, like because like Mickey was saying, you you probably want him to be your starter next year. So, oh yeah, yeah, nope. and I want it, but just again, unfortunately, with today day and age transport, and us too, because of how much stock we're putting into next season. At the end day, next year's it's ACC championship well, for me- us. Well, let me ask you this, Blaine. Like, like, go get your best players, right? I mean, you're, it's going to be a tough sell to get another quarterback to come in and be – maybe you could be QB2. You could do that. Um, maybe it's a grad I mean, it's a grad quarterback, like what you're talking about, um, Layton. But um, we may, one guy we're not talking about is, are you okay with Lex Thomas being your QB3? Or would you bring in somebody else? I mean, like, I don't know. I I, I, I just look at it – I totally agree with you, Cumberland. His portal win now. Don't care about her feelings. Just go get the best players you can get. And you would think after, was it two years ago, they had four quarterbacks they had to run through. That's a super rare thing to do. So I don't think they need to worry about QB4 or anything like that. But, you know, maybe going to get a QB3. I mean, like, to me, they've got three QBs. It's a matter of can you go get a better quality QB2 or 3. And honestly, but I'll I'll just go to go back to kind of come back to the point we were talking about earlier. TJ Bailey looked really good for a freshman yeah. throwing around out there. Like, yeah. granted, it was against a scrimmage, but like, he was on the twos, right? He wasn't with the ones at times, and he was making really good throws against the ones at times. So, 
Um, I felt really good about him. Look, seeing what I saw, I also understand the men, like the mentality of having a true freshman quarterback. Yeah. And yeah. on the road, like you said, at Georgia Tech or whatever, like or whoever else, you're going to be at, on the road at UNC this year, or you know they're going to. It's going to be a mental thing. And are you ready for it? If 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 it comes time for you to play, so you get it. Well, and and, and I and I'll say this. Obviously, for the offense next year, the requirements for the quarterback position is going to be the lowest it's been in a long time. Where you do not need to go be Superman. You don't yeah, even need yeah. to go and be. Uh, you don't even need to go and be Clark Kent. Like you 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 can literally just be the Jander Clark Kent and 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 we'll have a top yeah. you know twenty five offense. Yeah, actually. and I feel like that's a that's a benefit for Bailey is no if you get mm-hmm. thrown into that or uh, having just to play take at care of the ball. you have like five guys around you you're not out there by yourself low and like this is on my back I yep. have to make something happen. Yep. Yeah. If it's not there, throw the ball away. Don't turn yeah. the ball over. So, Macon, appreciate you, man. We'll let you go, man. Appreciate yeah, you. Man. Thanks, guys. See you later. Talk to you later. Go pack, baby. Yeah. Um, you know, so 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 for me, like it's it's kind of indifferent to me. Like, like if, if they don't get somebody, I'm cool with it. But if they do get somebody, it's I I, I get that too. But again, it, it's I'm not looking for you know getting a big time guy. I'm looking for a guy that if things go south with CJ, you know, that is a guy that okay, let's let, we have another option. Cause I mean, if 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 Grayson McCall gets hurt, which again, he has a hinge, he has a history of injuries. Uh, you know, most of most years he doesn't play all 12 games. Um, then you're basically going all in on CJ. Like, 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 yeah. I like love Lex. You played well three for three for 121 yards. Yeah, that, that's great. Keep in mind that just part of that was Wesley Grimes just being Wesley Grimes. Um, but <laughs> yeah. you know, shout out to Lex again, no hate there, but he's just not. I don't know, man. Like, I'm just, I'm just not necessarily feeling great, you know, with, with, with Lex, but. Anyway, so 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 I, I I just more just want to say to say the comment for sure, no doubt about it, that we cannot say CJ needs to be our number two because he's the future. We we got to stop saying that. Unfortunately, yeah. it's just not not the way of the world anymore. It's just not as much as I would love for it to be. It, but yeah, like like there's no doubt. I would I am I would I am thrilled right now thinking about how you have CJ Bailey right now. Then you have Will Wilson. Uh, the quarterback, not not the shortstop, uh, coming in uh, for 2025. Like that's a great quarterback pipeline right now. So, yeah. and because everything right now, and and because I want, I mean, like I'll add this to you as well as I mean, Hollywood Smothers, phenomenal game. Jordan Waters, phenomenal game. Kendrick Raphael, phenomenal game. Duke Scott, phenomenal game. I yeah. mean, like I I think this is game. I mean, it's just league, you, have, yeah. you have a ton of people around you that can. If you're not feeling like it's your best game, just get it to a playmaker and easy so so my first point is i mean like like where are you going to fit jonathan paylor i mean he's a guy that you're going to <laughs> yeah gonna it's not even year. with the team yeah oh where are you going to put him yeah, like, he hasn't running... gotten here yet he gets here uh, yeah. this week i think or next week like, it's like crazy. Running, backs, running backs you're filled wide receivers you're filled like where are you going to put him we've ever had this issue before no yeah. but i and love it on offense the... And, and somebody was saying in the comments, like, like in terms of skill levels on the offense side, I mean, yeah, the, we haven't had skill level positions like this on paper, yeah, on paper in a long yeah. time. So, and I would say, I would say, injuries are big for state. So, you yeah. have all those guys ready to come in and take that place. That's huge. Yep, absolutely. But I mean, like, I would say this is probably the the best running back room we've had. Oh, is probably Andre Andre Brown and Tony Baker. Like on paper, I mean, you had Jalen Samuels, yeah, game. yeah. If you consider but, I mean, the but they're, the fact they're, they're, yeah, but the fact your RB3 is probably Hollywood Smothers right now, like that's 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 huge. insane. And the fact that you're running back four, I mean, Duke Scott, who I mean, showed a lot of promise in the spring game, like, uh, so I mean, yeah, you're 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 feeling think, really really good. Let's put that I way. think Anai is gonna have a blast with opening his playbook this year, yeah. <laughs> Oh, totally. And I'm ready to see it because we didn't get to really see it last year much. So I'm excited to see just them airing it out and seeing all these plays. But but this is kind of a good good metaphor. So Nick, so with Nick Potter, that 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 CJ and still Grace McCall just needs to go be Brock Purdy. You know, he doesn't need to go be a stud. Just go be a game manager. You know, but yeah. but, but luckily luckily enough for us, Grace McCall is talented enough that he can be more than a game manager. He can be a playmaker. So. That's a good point. That's a, that, that's a good metaphor, Nick. I like that. Um, and then on the offensive line wise, I mean, you know, 
great game. I mean, man, just so many gaps were open on the run run game side. Um, I mean, you knew that. I think it's going to be interesting kind of how things work on the depth side from the offensive line. Uh, but, I mean, with Dawson Jeremy getting his extra year, uh, you know, you have options. So Because I think mm-hmm. Matt McCabe is, was your starting guard. Uh, I think so. Side of yep. Tim McKay. So, um, so excited to see what he can do there. Um, but yeah, no, again, super, super excited about football this year. Uh, it is going to be awesome. And, uh, lastly, we'll, we'll talk about one more negative before we wrap this up, but I sure hope NC state, fo- state baseball is okay. I'm a little worried about them. Y'all. <laughs> I think they gave It'll all their fun. talent to our basketball teams for a little bit. We're good. Yeah. Now they're done. The yeah, baseball they, were helping us, they were helping us yeah. get to, cause NC state, you know, we can't have a ton of nice things at the same time. Like only you a have few to, nice things. Yeah, it can't have too much. So I think they took one for the team and helped. They'll, I, they'll be they'll be fine. I mean, it's baseball. You go through some slumps, and you got to remember Whitaker and Highfield didn't pitch this weekend, this past weekend yeah, against realize, Louisville. So I didn't realize Noah Souls is out. Yeah, he. I didn't realize that either until yesterday. Yeah, he got hurt against ECU. I think. Yeah, he had surgery. So yeah, you're down three of your top guys, and including two starting pitchers. So yeah, yeah you just got to figure out a way to to survive until you get them back. Hopefully that's this weekend. Yeah, hopefully that's well, this weekend. Well, and, and and that's that's the thing. I mean, right now you're on a five game losing streak, losing to ECU. Yeah. They can swept by Louisville, which is a it's not the Louisville of old. It's it's like a below average, you know, Louisville team. And then you lose to UNCW, and now you have to go to Clemson, who is number two in the country right now. Yeah, and then oh, you come home, tough. and then you come home, and you face Campbell, which they're mm-hmm. no slouch. Yeah. And then you go and you play UNC uh, in a series. So I mean, like, I, mean, I think unfortunately for us, though, like the smaller schools in North Carolina are just big programs, like UNCG, yeah. UNCW, Campbell. Like those are some high quality baseball programs. So. I think that's unfortunate for us because usually those kind of teams you're marking down as a win for any other state. But here it's like Campbell is usually like a regional uh, yeah. competitor all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't have we don't have any get right games. We don't have any get right games. So Michael, and UNCG go ahead. beat Wake. So I'm OK right. on that one. Well, go ahead, Michael. Yeah. I, like you said, it's tough. we got a tough two weeks. And yeah. I, I mean, there It'd be nice to get one of these Clemson or UNC. If you know you lose both, then you're looking at your three and four in the ACC series. You're well below 500, and yeah, you got to climb out of it from there. So I think you know if they can if they can get one of these two next series, that that, that's kind of treading water, and then finish the season strong. But it's gonna be tough. I mean, again, I want to make it very clear that I will never ever say. Uh, you should fire Elliot Avent. You're never going to fire him. Nobody should ever say you're that they that he should be fired. No, like, but now can they say, hey, we're 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 asking you to you know to to move along, you know, like kind of thing, like you know, kind of come to an agreement deal. And uh, I'm saying that that if you don't win a series against Clemson or UNC, like like you know they're going to be just state fans are going to be just just oh it's going to be like every time. Yeah, but- in any it's sport, just, like even after the final four game, people were like, I was okay, gonna say, it, it's like you're never yeah. gonna, you're gonna have those fans that are just, yeah, nope. I'm gonna keep the profanity out of it, but I want to say another word, no, <laughs> like, no, yeah, no, I, it, but just, just more of that, like, you know, unfortunately. Now with the with the, the the renovations happening, um, you know, now with the fact that the ACC is just every single year, they're just it's going to be tough. It is what it is. With the yeah, fact yeah. that you have what you have, Alex Mack, who's playing at a MVP caliber right now. The fact that you you have you have supposed supposed to be a stud and Sam Highfield, you know, who's, who's been injured, like, you know, like, all right, like what, you know, again, let's let's just see what happens. I'll just I'll just I'll just leave it at that. But but again, it's. It's getting swept by Georgia Tech, getting swept to Louisville. Yeah, like, ugh, it's just it's Louis- just not, the Louisville one hurt. The Louisville one hurt. <laughs> Louisville one hurt. So <laughs> that one hurt. But, but yes, so stay tuned. Again, hey, let's go and shock the world against Clemson this weekend. Let's go do that, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, I uh, just want to say thank you again uh, to all of Wolfpack Nation for the support. Uh, we'll actually have a vlog for the game 
I'm sorry, not for, for the game, for the Final Four weekend uh, coming out here this week. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Um, and to make sure you do not miss out on that, make sure again hit that subscribe button, y'all, as we are on the road still for 10,000 uh, subscribers, baby. And uh, so your support would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, and then make sure to hit that notification bell as well so you're notified on all your devices whenever we go live with any new NC State content. And uh, also, too, make sure again to give us a follow at Tough Talk Now on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as we're also knocking on the door for 19,000 Twitter followers as well, which is unbelievable and so, so amazing. We thank you all so much, so much for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, Wolfpack Nation, we, we love you guys. Y'all are the best. It is a, it is by far the best time to ever be an NC State fan right here, right now. And, uh, you know, right. just en en enjoy it, y'all. Enjoy the moment. And uh, make sure to go support all these sports, y'all. Uh, softball, uh, uh, men's tennis this weekend, who's celebrating their senior weekend. Make sure to go and support them. And yep. uh, and we'll see you all soon. Uh, Michael, uh, any final comments here before we wrap up? No. Um, <laughs> man, no. I just – well, actually, I will. I will say something because okay. I kind of came in late on the – just on the overall Final Four yeah. experience. It was like – I mean, it was awesome. Like, I really hope we get to do that again. Um, I mean, it was – it, it was It was tough that – I mean, it was a great weekend, but it was tough that, you know, what we were there to celebrate, we didn't even, like, really get a chance to celebrate because the women's team lost Friday night and the men's team lost Saturday. But, I mean, yeah, that it was it was great, and, and I want to get back there. <laughs> yep, absolutely. It's like, you're, it's like a drug you were feigning to get back I know. to the yeah. final four. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to handle losing the same ever again. I know. Ken, any final th thoughts, comments before we get out of here? I'm just – I finally get to rub in people's faces how awesome it is to be a state fan. <laughs> I haven't I haven't gotten to be experience this, so I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah so. no, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah, Wolfpack Nation, we love you guys. You're all the best. Uh, I mean, the last thing I'll say, I mean, just, uh, you know – just you know go and go invest go support uh you know whether that's like you know join the wolfpack club or or you know one pack nil uh if you haven't already you know got involved got invested make sure to go and, and check it out because again like there's there's uh you know price points depending on the benefits that you want and depending on you know how much you you know budget you have but just go get invested y'all and let's let's go all in and you know and i i think that if everybody goes and invests uh, just even just a little bit that it can go a long ways uh, towards not only just continuing to move uphill, but just having a year after year success for all of our sports, which is an, an amazing thing for sure. But thank you all so, so much, Wolfpack Nation. We appreciate y'all. And also, if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to us, do us a big, big favor and hit leave a five-star review. We greatly appreciate that as well. We love you guys. We'll see y'all soon. And go Pack, baby. <laughs>